Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We're coming to you live from the Digital Asset Summit in New York City. Joining me for this segment, we have Bernard Vandalanda. He is the Chief Investment Officer of Teplo. We're going to take a look at how blockchain technology could potentially change private equity investing. Bernard, thank you so much for joining us at DAS. Let's talk about that. How can blockchain technology transform private equity investing as we know it today? Well, Jill, first, a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, just for a point of clarification, I'm the Chief Issuance Officer oh, of Templum. Learn something It's a distinction because we are effectively an end-to-end -end platform for digital, private, and registered security instruments. Okay. So we work closely with issuers that are issuing these digital securities. Well, thank you for that clarification. So, in any event, um, you know, the, the digitization of private and registered securities is significant. I think most importantly because it provides this pathway to liquidity. In the blockchain universe, you have this uh, ongoing discussion around the merits of the public blockchain, Ethereum, for example, ERC20, versus the private blockchain the solution, which we favor. Uh, we have actually foreclosed on the public blockchain, favoring instead the, the private partnership that we have with Symbion. Um, our goal, of course, is to create an ecosystem that provides uh, not only you know, regulatory compliance, uh, but so to comfort and security for banking partners and so forth. Uh, you know, within the digital security space. And I think I think part of the challenge with adoption is finding um, quality of transactional uh, portfolios and that will really bring this concept to fruition. We always talk about scalability and trust in these kinds of conferences and I think that's really where one of the key roles is. Yeah, so, so we agree. Um, the reality is we at Templum have built out our business with a, a focus, at least on the primary issuance side, to reflect you know, the stature and the, the capabilities of a boutique investment bank. And so all of the issuance activity that we're undertaking ourselves uh, is really, I think, best in class. We were responsible for the proof of concept uh, trade, the, the tokenization, if you will, of the St. Regis and Aspen many months ago. We had a great sponsor, it was a great product, uh, but the total equity issuance of circa $18 million was small in size, albeit big uh, in stature. Uh, and so we took a step back having had extensive discussions through our distribution efforts with institutional investors, pensions, sovereigns, large asset managers, and we, we understood from those conversations that there is in fact great appetite for a, a, a digitized, unregistered private security interest, uh, particularly in yielding assets. And, and as a consequence, we curated a pipeline of issuances um, uh, you know, that, that, that meet that appetite. Uh, and so by way of example, my colleague made reference to a diversified commercial real estate portfolio that's going to be very large. Uh, it's going to be structured as an open-ended REIT vehicle. Uh, it's going to be yielding. Uh, and it's arguably relevant for the same institutional investors that would have sought exposure to the private markets previously and now recognize as well the pathway to liquidity that we can provide through the application of blockchain, private permission blockchain in the space, right. if that makes sense. I was going to ask you, are, do you see interesting deals in the works? And you had mentioned uh, that one just now. Are there certain sectors or, or different parts of the industry that it's gravitating towards? Yeah, I think for us, you know, we ultimately believe philosophically that the private markets will be digitized full stop. It's a question of time. In the near term, you know, we are favoring uh, simple, simple stories. And so our pipeline is really built around yielding ABS. Uh, so any products that are providing consistent leasing revenues, consistent income generation, uh, are, are those that we're, we're trafficking. And if you think about the dynamic there, uh, the market, the investment community is um, is looking for yielding assets full stop. And uh, historically in the private markets, they have to acquire exposure to that yield in an illiquid fashion. So once they make the investment, they're, they're stuck as it were. Right. And the, the burden of responsibility to return capital lies on the, on the issuer's shoulders. Here, by digitizing those positions, we actually give the investor the ability to uh, exercise that right for themselves with their own two feet in the creation of a secondary marketplace, which is enabled by the digitization of the security instruments, uh, you know, we, we have in fact a pathway to liquidity. Uh, so that's quite significant. So a yielding product uh, that has a pathway to liquidity, we think is going to be very favorably received by the large institutional investors that you know, are allocating in scale. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And thanks for joining us at the Digital Asset Summit. I'm Jill Melantrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.